Good morning, my brothers and sisters at Shore Acres Bible Chapel. It's a tremendous privilege to be able to speak to you on this uh, Good Friday morning. It's certainly a very different way than how we expected to be together, um, but thankful to be able to be with you to take these few moments and um, just share a thought with you that I had uh, from the Word of God as we um, are in this Easter season of 2020. Uh, if you have a Bible, um, I'd be really grateful if you would turn it to the book of Ephesians. Uh, it's maybe not the, the passage or a passage that you would think of um, looking at when it comes to um, a Good Friday service or maybe even thinking about Easter. Um, but there was a verse that, that stood out to me recently in studying uh, this book and this passage especially that I would like to share with you and uh, really just bring two thoughts of encouragement to you. Uh, this morning. Uh, the verse is in Ephesians in chapter 2 and it's actually almost right in the middle of the chapter, uh, verse number 13. Uh, so let's read it together and then um, I'll share with you a little bit of background on the two thoughts that I would like to, to bring to you this morning. Paul writes in Ephesians 2 and verse 13 he says, but now in Christ Jesus you who formerly were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Initially, when Mike had asked me if I would speak this morning, um, it wasn't very long into thinking and praying through what I would share with you that, that this verse came to mind, but it's not really been until recent days that I've gone back and looked at it again that um, it feels a lot more pertinent than it maybe did several weeks ago. And I wonder if that is because of the little phrase um, towards the end of the verse, he says, we've been far off, but we have been brought near. The idea of coming near to anyone outside of our extended family, or sorry, I should even say perhaps the family that live in our own home or anyone that we share a residential living space with, is almost foreign to us as we sit here in April 2020. So long as we're over six feet away from someone, that is kind of the, the minimum acceptable distance for how close we can get to someone today. And the thought for many of us of being near other people with a virus being spread so easily is and can be quite a hard thought to process. And yet in this verse, Paul is saying to these Ephesians, look, you have been brought near. Paul in this chapter actually shares with the Ephesians two ways in which they have been brought near. In the first 10 verses, he is going to talk about how they have been brought near to God. He is going to talk about how they have come from a state which has been where they were sinners and they have now been brought near to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And then from verses 11 down to the end of verse number 18, he then talks about not only have they been brought near to God, but they have also been brought into the blessings which were at one point in time reserved only for the nation of Israel as God's chosen people. And I want to just share a couple of things here with you today as we think about what happened nearly 2,000 years ago at Calvary. You see, the basis for all of this happening, as Paul says here in verse number 13, is that it was by the blood of Christ. Easter weekend, I think, can mean many different things to many different people. And yet on a Good Friday, typically, we tend to find ourselves in a little bit more of maybe a somber, reflecting mood, because today is the day where we would remember the day that our Lord Jesus was crucified. The day where he made his way out of the fortress Antonia, having been brutally tortured and treated by the Roman cohort that went the door that lived there. He came from that fortress out of the city, bearing his cross to the hill that we call Calvary. And there at Calvary, that cross which he had borne with the help of Simon of Cyrene, he was then nailed to that cross. 
and to many who witnessed it, the work of the Romans was successful, the plan and the plot of the high priest and the Jewish officials had succeeded, and yet there was a far greater work of God at play on that day. And that is one of the reasons why I think on a Good Friday morning we can be so thankful for what took place on that day. Yes, it would have been horrific. It would have been far more gruesome and bloody and violent than I think we would even be used to seeing. And yet, throughout all of it, God was still moving despite everything that man was doing around him. And Paul, in these first 10 verses of Ephesians chapter 2, he is going to talk about how at one point in time in the past, these Gentiles, would, and even the Jews for that matter, they were dead. They were dead in their trespasses and sins. He talks about how they formerly walked in them according to the course of this world, how we formerly lived according to the lusts of our flesh. And then he changes the whole section of the verses in verse 4 with one little three little one little three letter word but and that's the difference in what happened that day at calvary yes it looked like mankind won yes it looked like the devil had achieved his aim and had victory over the plans of god and yet it says but god being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in our transgressions made us alive together with Christ. See, that is the beautiful thing about Calvary, isn't it? That where one man died, it was so that many others might have life. And God, through the sacrifice of Christ, that perfect sacrifice for us at Calvary, he made a way whereby we could be alive. We often run the danger and maybe it's good for us all to assess our own minds at some point in time in our hearts, of maybe thinking of Calvary a little too smallly. I say that very carefully because I really don't want to minimise the way that we do think of it, but I think Calvary has a bigger impact, a bigger set of ramifications. More was done there on that day by the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father than we perhaps completely understand right now or may ever be able to understand even in eternity. For on that day, God redeemed for or provided a way where he could redeem for himself a people. And it wasn't just so that we might have our sins forgiven. We actually learn one of the additional purposes of God here in these verses. And this is beautiful if you look at um, verse number seven. Paul is talking about how, yes, we have been made alive with Christ. We've been raised up with him. In his mind, we've already been seated with him in the heavenly places. For this is the very reason why. So that in the ages to come, he might show the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. You see, through Calvary, what God did, yes, he bought himself for people, but there is this anticipation of a future day throughout all the eternity, all the ages to come, where God is going to say, you see these children that I brought into my family? This is what the riches of my grace has done. We are, we are almost going to be put on display for God to bring more glory to him than, than, than could ever be imagined. And, and he will point to every single one of us, every single one of you who have believed in his son and say, look at what my grace has done. Look at what my mercy has achieved. And it was because of the blood of Christ. Because of that blood which was shed so that we might be brought near. Or oh, the Lord is doing a lot more in our lives right now even than we can think of when you get down to verse number 10 paul talks about how we are his workmanship that every single one of us as christians our lives in christ not only do they start at calvary when we come and we fall down and we confess that we are sinners and we ask for his forgiveness and trust in him completely our lives in him do not just start and end there 
But God then starts a work inside every single one of us. I was reminded just this evening, um, Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, For I am confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. And Paul says, look, you are his workmanship. The word there for workmanship, now I'm no Greek scholar, but the word there for workmanship is the word poema. It is the word where we get our English word poem. And the idea behind that word is that someone takes and creates a beautiful masterpiece. Let me tell you this Good Friday morning. Christ intends to make every single one of us, every single one of you, a beautiful masterpiece for his glory. I hope that if you currently deal with any thoughts of self-doubt, self-confidence, self-worth, I hope that this does a little bit to dispel them, for while we might think that we do not mean much to people around us, the one thing that never changes is how much we mean to God. How much he is invested in us, for he has a desire to make us his workmanship. And so Christ at Calvary, he brought us near through his blood. And we were brought near to God. The wall of sin that had kept us from God, a way was made whereby that could be breached. But not only is are we brought close to God through Calvary, I want us also to just be encouraged in this. We have also been brought into tremendous blessing. Paul goes in verses 11 through 19 of this chapter to explain very specifically to the Gentiles, look, this is where you used to be. There's some beautiful parallels in this chapter if you want to look at it. In the verse, first 10 verses where he talks about their spiritual state and the reality of that and how, in verse 4, but God, how that changed and the, the new spiritual state that we have been brought into because of our salvation. In verses um, 11 through 19, he's going to start out by saying, look, here's now where you were physically. Look, you were formerly Gentiles in the flesh. You were called the uncircumcision by the circumcision. There's almost a little bit of sarcasm in verse number 11 from Paul. And he says, remember, you were separate from Christ. You were excluded from the commonwealth of Israel. He lists through five different things of, of the reality of the physical position of these Gentiles. And then in verse number 13, he flips it on his head as we read it. He says, but now, but now in Christ Jesus... Okay, so the new standing that we have in our life in Christ, we have been brought near. Now, for these Gentiles, this was going to be revolutionary because this meant that they were on equal standing with Jews. And it was equally as revolutionary, I think, for the Jews to suddenly realize that their standing was going to be shared by Gentiles. There was a huge culture and mindset shift that was going on here. And yet, what Paul is going to say is, look, where once... The way to God had only been through the Jews, where once the blessings of God upon for, for a chosen people were only going to be reserved for the Jews. You now, in the one new man that God has created, you have not only been reconciled to each other, but you have also been reconciled to God. In chapter 1 of this book, he has already outlined in verses 3 through 14, a lot of the blessings, every spiritual blessing that we have received in Christ Jesus. I think there is an additional, if you would count it as a blessing, I think it is well worth it, that he goes into in these verses. He talks about how in verse number 18, he says, For through him, okay, so that's through the Lord Jesus Christ, we have both our access in one spirit to the Father. This, I think, is one of the most profound and most beautiful blessings that we have because of Calvary. That because of Christ, we have our access to the Father. I just want to read with you some verses in Hebrews chapter 10. This is uh, starting in verse number 19. 
the writer says, Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place, how? By the blood of Jesus. So he's saying, look, we can enter the holy place. We have direct access into the very presence of God. How? Just like Ephesians 2 verse 13, by the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way, which he inaugurated for us through the veil that is his flesh. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, so much here that we could go into if we had more time. But listen to this. Let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. My brothers and sisters, what I wanted to encourage you with this morning is this. Not only is it that we have been brought near to God through Christ's death at Calvary, not only has a sacrifice been made and penalty paid and um, judgment borne for our sins, that should have been ours, but it doesn't stop there. We have, and many of us, we know this, and so I pray that this is just an encouragement and maybe a spurring on for us to take use of it, like maybe we never have before, but we have access into the very presence of God the Father by the blood of Christ. The veil in the temple was rent that day. It would have been a phenomenal thing to have seen how how that how that huge piece of fabric was torn in two from top to bottom. But we have direct access into his presence. Access for us today to many things is restricted. Whether it be places we would normally go, such as school or work, or places where we feel that suddenly we have need to go. Many of you might be feeling the need to go and get a haircut or something like that, and you just can't today. Our access to places is restricted. We are being told to stay in our homes as much as we possibly can. And yet the one place that has never shut, it do- shut, shut its doors, that will never shut its doors, is our access to God the Father by the blood of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I pray this morning that we would take more advantage of this, this Easter season, than ever before. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be with a great deal of pomp and ceremony. He loves you just the way you are, and he is ready to accept you just the way that you come. But he loves it when we come into his presence. He loves it even more when we come and tell him what we think of his son. And so on this Good Friday, yes, we might have somber and maybe reverential remembrance thoughts of what happened at Calvary. But let's also have an attitude and an air of thanksgiving. For by that blood of Christ, we have entered into a place where we are more blessed than we could ever imagine. But that we have direct access to the Father that can never be shut, that can never be taken away from us. By the blood of Christ. The blood that was shed that day I think for many Roman soldiers would have been just another part of their everyday duties. Just another part of putting another man to death. And yet the significance of every drop of blood that was spilt that day cannot be overstated. For so much of our life and faith and trust in Christ depends on it. And I for one, my heart just overflows with thankfulness and how willing he was to have that bloodshed for me, that even while I was dead in my trespasses and sins, his love would compel him to do that for me. I pray this has encouraged you this morning. I would have loved to have been with you, and I hope that as you have your um, time of visiting online, as I understand that you are going to do, um, that you will just have a wonderful and encouraging time doing that. And as we remember our Lord Jesus this weekend, I pray that your hearts would be encouraged and that we would see him in new and lovely ways that perhaps we have not seen for some time. Please, I'd love to pray for you and then uh, we will bring this devotional to a close. Our God and Father, I just come to you now and I thank you for my brothers and sisters at Shore Acres. Father, I, I know this is not how we intended to be together this Easter. It is very different from any Easter, Lord, that I have ever known and probably for many others as well. And yet I thank you, Lord, that we have the ability to meet in this way, that we still have the freedom to be able to share these truths and these thoughts 
um, through technology. We thank you for that and we thank you, Lord, for how creative you were in putting your church together that we can still exist even though our buildings are shut and we're confined to our houses. Father God, I thank you for your great love, a great love that would move you to action despite our um, condition while we were still in our trespasses and sins. Oh God, you are more wonderful, more gracious and loving than we could ever understand and we just thank you and praise you for that. Father, as we go into this weekend, as my brothers and sisters at Shore Acres and many other churches go into this weekend, I just pray that we would be encouraged and you about your son. I pray that we would be more in love with him. I say that reverently, Father, but more in love with him and more in love with you than we have been to this date and time. And that we would look back at Easter 2020 as being a turning point in our, in our consideration and affection for him. But Father, throughout all of it, I just pray that you would receive all the glory that is rightfully due your name. So we just lift these things up to you, praying for your help and blessing now in all things. In Jesus' name I will pray. Amen. <music>